In this video, I will demonstrate how to utilize an ROC curve to determine cutoff score to use for a diagnostic test. In other words, what score on a specific measurement may be used to then diagnose either having the presence of a certain condition or having the absence of that condition. So in a previous video, I demonstrated how to actually construct an ROC curve. Now in this video, I will demonstrate how to use the coordinate points to determine which score would be appropriate as a cutoff to say or to determine if someone may or may not have the presence of a, of a condition. Now in the example we used before we were looking at using a balance test score to determine or predict whether or not someone will develop a history of falling. And so in order to analyze or produce the rock curve as I demonstrated in the previous video we go to the analyze menu ROC curve and we need to move the the variables of interest into their respective places. So the actual variable we're using to predict the outcome goes in the test variable box and then the presence of or absence of the outcome goes in the state variable box. Now in order to get a table producing coordinates that show which scores are associated with a certain level of sensitivity and a certain level of specificity we need to choose in the display box coordinate points or coordinate points of the ROC curve. And then we click OK. And then we get the same output we saw in the previous video where we have an R ROC curve here, which shows our area under the curve, which in this case was 0.849, which is considered to be a fairly good predictor. Now there's a couple different ways we can approach how we determine these cutoffs and a lot of it depends on how important sensitivity is versus specificity. If sensitivity and specificity are, are of equal importance, then we try and find the score that will allow us to maximize sensitivity and maximize specificity. And a, a typical easy way to do this is to eyeball your curve and what we look for is on the x-axis we like to see a small number which indicates a high level of specificity and on the y-axis we like to find kind of the highest point of the curve relative to the y-axis. So in this case what we look for is the kind of the point of the curve that's as close as possible to the upper left corner of our of our graph here. So in this case that would probably be this point right about here which gets us a sensitivity of about 0.8 and a specificity of about 0.8 because remember the x-axis is actually 1 minus specificity so a value of 0.2 means we have a specificity of 0.8 so this point on the curve gives us a sensitivity of 0.8 and a specificity of 0.8 and so this point would be where our cutoff would be. This would be the value at which we would be able to say that if you are below this particular score, you, ha you will have a history of falling. If you are above a particular, that particular score, you're less likely to have that history of falling. Now, if specificity is more important than sensitivity, then that will change your cutoff value. If sensitivity is more important than specificity, then that could change it as well. So you need to determine what is more important. So in this example, we're going to pretend that they are equally important, that we want to find a cutoff point that maximizes both sensitivity and specificity. But that will vary depending on what it is you're trying to measure and, and how you're going to utilize the test. So what we do then is go to the coordinates of the curve table, and what we can see in the first column are the actual scores on the balance test. And remember, a lower balance score indicates poor balance, a high balance score indicates good balance. So what we try and do is look in the next two columns, the sensitivity column and the specificity column, and again a low value in this farthest right column indicates excellent specificity, whereas the value down here in the middle column indicates excellent sensitivity. So let's pretend that we want to balance out the two. So we want to have as high a sensitivity as we can and as high a specificity as we can. So we want those two values to be equal. So what we do then is look for pairs of values that get as close to 0.8 for sensitivity and 0.2 for specificity. So if we look at the values here, 7.125, again that's the score in the balance test, 
that gives us a sensitivity of 0.78. It gives us a specificity of very close to 0.8. And so it appears that this value of 7.125 gives us that trade-off, or maybe these collection of values here in the center, give us a, a good trade-off between sensitivity and specificity, that both are very close to 0.80. And so our cutoff value would be somewhere in the 7.125 or 7.375. So that would indicate we'd kind of draw a line here that say if you have a balance score below 7.1, then you're more likely to have a history of falling. If you have a balance score above that 7.125 or 7.375, you're less likely to have a history of falling. And so that way we can determine kind of this cutoff as part of a diagnostic tool. So if someone has a balance score less than 7.1, we might say you are more likely to fall, so we should incorporate some sort of an intervention for you to, pretend, to prevent that falling. If you're above 7.1, then you're less likely to fall, and so maybe you don't need that intervention. And so to summarize, well, in order to use ROC curves to determine cutoff scores, for having the presence or absence of a certain condition, we need first need to determine what's most important, balance or sensitivity or specificity, or do we want them to be as equally important? And then we use those, those predeterminations to then choose a cutoff score using the coordinates of our ROC curve. So hopefully you've been able to learn something in this video, and hopefully you can utilize this video in your own research. Thank you very much.